Okay, turn your Bible with me to the book of Revelation today, chapter 2. We are still in Revelation chapter 2. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 2. And today we will see from verse number 18 through 26, or uh, 29. Verse number 18 through 29. We are seeing the church of Thyatira here. The church in Thyatira. The word Thyatira means order of affliction. The smell of affliction. There's affliction over here. And um, this church is a church that had allowed wickedness. A church that had bowed down to and compromise to wickedness, wrong doctrines. It had compromised with a woman on a church leadership. It has compromised and allowed witchcraft in the church. Order of affliction. In the book of Revelation chapter 2. Verse number 16, uh, verse number 18 onwards, the Bible says, And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, This thing saith the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his spirit and his feet are like, fi like fine brass. I'd like to talk to you today on the subject called a church that allowed Satan behind the pulpit. A church that allowed Satan behind the pulpit. We're living in a day and age today where we have found compromise with favorites. We have bowed ourselves to compromise to false doctrines because we don't want to offend. We have compromised to bow to evil and sin because we don't want to lose anybody. When we take a step of compromise, what we are doing is opening up the windows to allow Satan to take control. Here is a church that openly denied and rejected the word of God. By saying no to the very inspired word of God. And say. But what if she has the gift? Instead of saying what say the scripture. But what if he has been called by God. Instead of saying what say the scripture. We are Christians today. Who have compromised. Because we just want a lot of appreciations. And we have allowed Satan on the pulpits. I remember one day, beginning in the years, the beginning of my ministry, and I was not married, I was single. And people would give me suggestions. How to do ministry. And I had no experience. And most of the suggestions would come from women. Now they were not bad women. But it was something that, that is there within the woman. We have to understand and accept this truth. 
As you grow in the spirit, as you grow in the word of God, you become submissiveness according to the word of God. Because today in this day and age, we are living in a day and age where Satan wants to preach and make women understand that she is the leader. That's why today we like Oprah Winfrey show. They switch on the TV to watch Oprah Winfrey. Or Ellen D. Or Jenner, whatever her name is. Ellen D. Generous. The women shows. Because they teach that you can be independent. And you can be the boss. And you can be the leader. You don't have to you have a husband. You don't have to have a... But God's word says the different way. And today we have ladies on the pulpit. And in order to compromise with such, we say, maybe the Holy Spirit gave the gift to her. But what does the Bible say? Satan is behind the pulpit today with fancy clothes and great swelling words. Christians have allowed such to happen. And so in the beginning, there were ladies who would give suggestions and I did not have experience. And many a times, I didn't know how to deal with the situation. I know that was wrong. I knew they were trying to... But I was giving in because that was the beginning and I, I didn't want to hurt anybody, offend anybody. But what I was doing was instead of being firm in the truth and standing on the scripture and telling them. I was like, okay, okay. And this was nothing to do with the doctrine. This was to do with the... Uh, with how the things ought to be done. And I was giving in. And it was causing drift and problems in the ministry. I remember there was a lady from Germany. She had come with an Indian husband and came to our church. And I allowed, and she, after the service, she said, Pastor, can I give a testimony? And I said, Sure. We love people giving testimony and you glorify God. And she came forward and gave a testimony and she try to teach us how we should preach and how we should not preach. And I said, they're listening. She wanted to give a testimony about God's goodness. And here she is telling us how we should preach and how we should not preach. Who gave her the right to tell us that? She's not even a member of our church. She was very bossy in her spirit. We got to be careful. Now, it's not all the ladies, but I've seen many in this so-called Pentecostals and charismatic and, and new age churches today where women are the bosses. Thank God for the ladies in our church. Just trying to pamper you, okay? You're very nice. You're very submissive, very humble. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. It's a blessing. You got to be so. That's how you receive God's blessing. The Bible tells here in verse number 18, And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God. You see, yeah, the Son of God, the word is used, the Son of God. In other places, different words are used. Here, it speaks about the Son of God. God can beget only God. God had a begotten Son. It was God. Now, the word God, is the Son of God is specifically used because this church had allowed
about the devil behind the pulpit. And God wants to make it very clear. The church belongs to the Son of God. And the church ought to be run and be directed and be functioned according to what the Son of God said. In the scripture, according to the Spirit. That's why we read, Let him that hears the ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. The Spirit of God in this dispensation, in this day and age, works through the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Very clear. The Spirit speaketh to the church today through His Word. This thing saith the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto the flame of fire. Why? The flame of fire speaks about the purity. The flame of fire speaks about the anger, the wrath. The flame of fire speaks about the jealousy because of compromise to the world. When the world has found itself comfortable in the Chairs and the pews of the church. Eyes like unto the flame of fire. And his feet are like the fine brass. Firmness. Uncompromising. What I say, I say. You do it. That's what God says. There's no nowhere he's going to bend it to you. You have to bend it to him. Lord, can you do this? No, no, no. Do what I say. Amen? Do what I say. Lord, how about... Um, they, no, 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 no. Do what I say. Today, in, the, in many churches, the people are preaching... Dolly Jesus. Like puffy Jesus. He's so smart. He wants to live for you. Without you, he's going to die. Come to Jesus. He'll kick you into hell if you don't come to him. Amen? You know what my Bible says? He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He'll break your bones if you play a fool with him. He is not going to bend it to you. You have to bend before Him. You bow before Him. He is the Lord. He is the Son of God. He is the King of Kings. And He is not going to allow Satan behind the pulpit in the church that belongs to Him. All church are same. No. No. Not all church are same. That's Satan's church. In the church in Thyatira, in the church that be, which belonged to Christ, the church of Satan entered in. We're going to see that. The church of Satan entered in. The first church of Satan in India was in Nagpur. Is in Nagpur. And then we have in Hyderabad and in Chennai. And so many other places. Church of Satan is coming up. Hillary Clinton is a Satanist. And if she wins, it's going to be a big trouble. The recent speech she says, in front of the bishop of the Catholic Church, she was saying, uh, I'm... Uh, Something she was, she's a Methodist. He says, I'm not like the bishop, but our doctrines are same because I'm also Methodist. We believe salvation by work and faith. And there was a big clap. That's true. 
What she said is true. Episcopalian churches are the churches of Roman Catholic churches sent out into the world to deceive many souls. And now there's WikiLeaks. I don't know why I'm bringing politics, but yes, I have to make it very clear. That's the woman in the chair. In one of his email that was leaked, it is written. She goes for this uh, for dinner. It is the satanic. They have this dinner. And in that dinner, the food that they eat is breast milk, sperm, and blood. Mix it, cook it, and eat it. That's satanic food. They have a feast. And the Clintons go there because they are the same. He says, take a knife, cut it deep on your middle finger, and eat the pain. That's in the emails that's being leaked. Very satanic. Very evil. And Bill Clinton was a Baptist. Not saved. Very evil. Some of the most wicked people come out of the Baptist church. Oprah Winfrey kicked out of the Baptist church. Because she was rebelling against the pastor in that church. She was trying to be bossy in the church. She was a Baptist. Grew up in a Baptist church. She was expelled from that church. And then she started with Oprah Winfrey Show. These things say the Son of God who has his eyes like unto the flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass. The Lord speaks here to the church. He's the Son of God. It belongs to him. He's jealous. He's angry with his church the way it is functioning, allowing false doctrines. He's going to judge, he says, fit like fine brass. Then we find he always appreciates the church when it does the right thing. In verse number 19, the Bible says, I know thy works. It was a church. You see, it was a church that worked for the Lord. They were working for the Lord. Now, they were good people in that church that allowed the satanic church. And, and there, was a, there was this mask that was worn we are also Christians we are also belong to the church but they were not saved they were in the church they did things like the Christian they walked like a Christian they dressed like a Christian they talked like a Christian they sang like a Christian but they were not the children of God but they were children of God they were saved Christian in this church in the church in Thyatira they were those who worked for the Lord. They sincerely worked for the Lord. The, the word of God says, I know thy works and charity. You know what is charity? Charity is love with action. Charity is love with action. You say, Lord, I love you. That is just words. Charity is love with action. If you say, I love you, you show with your work. That is called charity. You, you show it with your action. It's so easy to say, I love Lord. I love you, God. I, I have so much love for you. But can you, can you prove it? Can you show with something? How much do you love Him? How do you show His love? Your love for Him? Do we, do we desire to express our love. Charity. He says, I know thy works and charity and service. This was not a church that was 
these Christians in the Thyatira church were not just sitting around and, and saying, only the pastor will do. No, no, no. They were doing service. They're saying, I want to get involved with the pastor. I want to get involved with this person. These people did not say, you know what? Oh, I cannot get along. I cannot make my hands dirty. Uh, uh, you, you, don't, you, don't know, you don't understand me who I am. No, this church has said, I want to do something with you, pastor. They were doing service. They're working with the people. They're working with the church members. They're working with the pastor. They were getting involved. They were trying to do something for the Lord. They were not the spectators. You see, we as a Christian, God has not called us to be spectators in the pews, but to be participators. Not just cheerleaders, but participators in the ministry. That is what God is. Why do you think God saved you? So you can love Him. So you can serve Him. That's why. And God expects that from us. Work. You are not saved by work, but you are saved unto good works. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. And you are saved unto good works. And God says, I know thy works, charity. You're doing, you are not just thinking about you, you are taking care of others. You're not just piling up things. You're investing in somebody's life. You're investing in the work of the Lord. And then he appreciates their faith. They had faith to believe. And their patience. They were patient with others. Do you think, dear friends, do we deal with people the way Christ deals with us? Or do we get frustrated with people? It's so easy to get frustrated. I, I can get easily frustrated. I'm a kind of a guy, I want things to be done. You know, I believe in order. I believe in punctuality. I believe that... Everything should be in order, organized well. That's what I believe in. I believe in waking up early, getting up fresh, using one more hour early so I can leave one more hour for the Lord and, and do something more. I believe in that. But there are times I get frustrated. I get frustrated when others don't do it. But at the same time, during this frustration, I'm reminded... Have patience. Because I have a lot of patience towards you. I thank God God does not deal with me some, like the way sometimes I deal with people. I thank God. Sometimes the way that I might deal with people, if I, God would deal, I would be nowhere. But that does not allow me to behave like others. He just tells me, son, put an extra effort. One more mile ahead with others. If someone tells you come one more mile, go two more miles. We got to be patient with people. God is patient that somebody else may get saved. Why he has not come yet? Because he does not expect anyone to perish, but that many will come to repentance. Patience. And this church was patient. This church had service, this church had charity, this church, church had faith. And they were patient. And they worked. The Bible says, and the last to be more than the first. And thy patience and thy works. I know, I know thy works. He knows it. He watches. But on the day he will, you will know whether your work was godly or ungodly. Are you forgiving? Like Christ forgives you? Are you forgiving? Are you loving the way Christ loves you? Are you dealing with your children the way Christ deals with you? Are you dealing with your parents the way Christ deals with you? Are you obedient to your parents the way Christ says to you?
Are you patient with small children? Let Christ have patience with you. Are you patient with older men and older ladies as God has patience with you? Frustration is not the fruit of the Spirit. Patience is the fruit of the Spirit. Are we growing to become more into the image of Christ or degenerating back to the spirit that was dead before we got saved? This church was wonderful. This church was great. There's so many good things. There's so many wonderful character of this church. The attitudes was beautiful. And God is appreciating it. My friend, when, when we stand before God one day, may God speak about you such a way. It blesses my heart when people pray from this church for me and my family. It blesses my heart when you join with me in doing something for the Lord. It blesses my heart. And I see, wow, what a great soul this is. It's a wonderful character, the Lord. We all need to get involved, just like the church in Thyatira. Everybody, everybody had patience. Everybody worked there. Their charity. Oh, he'll do it. Oh, this one. No, this is not the kind of a church. This church got involved. This church said, you're not the only one who is going to row the boat. We are going to join in rowing the boat so we can go faster. And get more accomplished. Amen? Amen. You know, sometimes, like for example, I can just come and say, hey, can you, hey, sister, can you do that for me? So, bro, I can do that, but I don't feel that way it should be. Oh, sometimes I feel like I don't want to put extra burden on somebody. But if people would say, Pastor, is there something that I can do? I have this, 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 this gift. And if you want to use that in the ministry, I'll be more comfortable. God wants to see if you're willing to use the gift for His glory. You can sing. Sing it unto the Lord. I don't want to sing. Because this is not the way I want to sing. Huh. Sing it anyway. You like it or not, sing the praises of God. I don't want to say amen to that because I don't agree with that. Say amen because it's the word of God. God will appreciate you, dear friends, for whatever you do. I may not know what you're doing, but I'm sure you're praying for people. And God will appreciate you for praying. I'm sure in a way that I may not see, but you're doing something and God will appreciate you for that. And if that is something that you're doing, keep up the good works. Because one day God is going to say, well done. Amen? God will do that. While God appreciates, then he says, okay, now's the time to rebuke. Now the Lord rebukes the church. And the Lord rebukes the church because his church now allowed Satan to stand behind the pulpit. This church allowed Satan to stand behind the pulpit. You know the Bible says, kiss the son lest he be angry. Psalm chapter 2. We are called to kiss the son. Psalm chapter 2. But today, religious leaders want that. Bow before me, take my hands, kiss my rings. For I am God. People are bowing before the bishops and popes to kiss. Because they believe they are Jesus Christ on earth. Satan behind the pulpit. 
Satan behind pulpits. Notwithstanding, I have few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Zizabel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my... But God, but pastor, what about the gospel she preaches? God said, shut up. Amen? God said, shut up, shut up. But I can cook better than my wife. God says, go to work. Your wife will cook for you. But I can cook better than her. Okay, when she is not able to do, do it. But otherwise, let her do it. It's her duty. You go to work. Today, what's happening is wives are working. Husbands are taking care of children at home. Changing. Things are changing today. Husband becomes the babysitter. Go work. Bring money home. The walking styles of husbands are changing because wives are becoming. I'm the boss. I went to a house one day. I cannot forget that. Oh man. Poor man. And the lady says, I'll use some name. Okay. Tom. Okay. Nobody in this home. Nobody in this. Okay? This is eight, eight years back. I go there. The wife sits, talks to me. And the wife calls the husband. Tom, bring water for pastor. Tom. He brings water. Tom, there's biscuits in the bottle, in, this, in that container. Go, go. Tom goes. He brings biscuits. Oh man, my heart was broken. I'll tell you frankly, my heart was broken for that man. What's happening? What's happening? Because we have allowed the devil to come in a home. We have allowed devil to stand behind the pulpit. And we started listening to the devil to tell us what life is instead of allowing the Spirit of God to preach unto us what life is ought to be. Today what happens? Go to any bar in Goa. The wife sits in the counter of the bar. And the husband give him a little urak and a guitar. He does his work. Fish curry rice. He's happy. The wife is the boss running the house. What's happening? You're allowed that Jezebel. I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. A raw woman on the church leadership. You know what the Bible says in First Timothy? Turn your Bible to 1 Timothy. Don't tell me, but the Spirit of God made me the gift. He gave me the gift. <laughs> I'll tell you what the Spirit of God tells you. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verse number 9, 10. 11, 12. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and in severity, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Verse number 11. That's what he wants to say. Let the woman learn in... What? You know the easy word is? Shut up and learn. Let the woman learn in... But, but I know you can... Hey, hey, listen to me. In no way... Don't misunderstand me. In no way am I saying women are not able to do it. I'm telling there are so many great things that women can do what men cannot do. I can never become pregnant. 
I can never deliver a baby. This great joy, this great pleasure, this greatest gift, this alone, a woman can do it. A woman has her role in the church. A woman has her own roles at God. God is not saying, women are down and the man is up. No, no, not at all. God is not making men up there. You know, God did not remove men, uh, women from the sole of the feet and made you not from the head. He, you know what he did? He did not make you from down so that man says, you are below my leg, under my foot. He did not make you from the hair of the skull because you are not the boss in the home. You know why from where women were done? Made from the rape close to the heart. So that a woman would be loved and cherished and shown much affection by the husband. God is not saying women are... No, 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 don't misunderstand me. Don't get out of this place thinking that women said, no, you have the great, great role. Look at the Bible and read. The great, the women should uh, help Jesus Christ in the ministry. The, the people who help Jesus Christ in the ministry were women. The, the, the first person who saw the resurrected Christ was a woman. The person who went to a, will, a village and brought the whole village to Christ was a woman. It was a woman who, who was willing to sacrifice a costly alabaster box and open the perfume and, and the odor of the fragrance filled the home. It was a woman while the man sat there and said, I wish I was sold to the poor and made some money. It was a woman who did that sacrifice. God has great respect for women. But God has roles for women. You understand that now? God has roles for women to do what we are seeing is in the church. There was no woman apostles in the church. Jesus chose 12 men. It's like, I don't know, I don't know how can, I can say this thing. And it's, it's, it's right, but it may not be. I won't say it. It may not be this. If you want, call me. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay? Uh, it's some, it, it is not dirty. It's right, but I'm not comfortable in saying certain things. Um, but that's fine. But, um, but here it is. Women have their own role. Men have their own role. God thinks everybody is equal. And in equality, He gives different roles to perform. You see that? In equality, He gives different roles to perform. He does not allow women to teach and preach. Simple. But what about the Holy Spirit gave the gift? It is not from the Holy Spirit. It's from the evil spirit. The Bible says, let your woman learn in silence. But pastor, that lady who came to our church and prayed, on that conference she prayed. And she might have preached. I'm not denying it. I know Joyce might preaches. Paula White preaches. There are many ladies who are preaching. But I know one thing. They are totally against the word of God. They are doing things against the word of God. They might do better than others. But still God says, Shh, calm down. Take a cold bath, go to sleep. Notwithstanding, I have few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Zizabel, which calleth herself a prophetess. You know what a woman who is a prophetess will do? She will know that her character in the home and in the church is ought to be a sweet spirit and a calm spirit. And be in the church with a spirit of learning. And if you have a question, go home and ask your husband. If your husband is not saved, at least call the pastor and talk to him either in person, or don't try to teach. Now, can women teach? Of course. Can women preach? Absolutely, I believe in that. Turn your Bible to Titus chapter 2. You know, a ladies can preach to the ladies. A ladies can preach to the children. God has allowed that thing. Now, we are not talking about what other men say. We are looking at what the Bible says. The Bible says, in a, in a mixed congregation, women learn in silence. 
But woman, you can suddenly preach to the women. You can suddenly preach and teach to the children. That's what the Bible says, Titus chapter 2. Okay? But in Timothy, when it comes to the church where men and women are there, you know the Bible says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Why should she, she should learn in silence? So she's able to teach the other women. So she's able to teach the children. So in the church, God makes man as a leader, as a pastor. God chose 12 men as apostles. Not one among them was a woman. Did he think the women are not better? No, no, no. He didn't think that way. He just thought, this is the right way. And he did what is right. But what happened to this church in Thyatira was they compromised. You know the Zizabel story in the Old Testament? If you read the Bible in First King, you know what Zizabel did? She was, a, she was a, a wife of Ahab the king. You know who was Ahab? Ahab was, Ahab was this guy who was under, the, under his wife. He was a king. But you know what had happened? She was the one who was controlling him. One day he goes and he asks for the property of his neighbor. He says, no, no, I'm not going to give. This is from my father that I inherited. He goes sad, not able to do as a king, not able to get a property. Goes home and sleeps in quiet and he's sad. And the wife comes, Isabel comes and says, Hey, Ahab king, my lord, what happened? Why, are, why is your countenance so sad? Why are you, why are you really sad today? He says, you know what, that fellow is not willing to give his property, that vineyard to me. You know what she does? She does the false signature and a letter and he kills the man and gets the property. She becomes the boss. She's the one who was controlling Ahab the king. She was a pagan woman. She was a prophetess with an evil spirit. Now, this is not saying that Zizabel has come to the church, but the spirit of Zizabel is in churches today. The spirit of Zizabel is in the churches today. And these churches has a lot. Now, I'm not talking about women only, but I'm talking about men with the spirit of Zizabel. There are even men today with the spirit of Zizabel. Rebellious, false, Willingly ignorant and willingly teaching the false thing. Filled with the spirit of evil. I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman, Zizabel, which call it a self prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Women on church leadership. You know what? When you see a woman in the church trying to preach where men are there, run away from it. Don't ask the second question. Why? Just get out of that because it is against the word of God. You know what the Bible says? Let a woman keep silence in the church. Psh. Now, I don't know. Your, I cannot satisfy your opinions and your views. and I can just tell you what the Bible says. Because I believe the Bible is God's word. Now they are doing great. Oh, but, but what about the souls that are getting saved? The water still comes from the rock inspired of Moses. God wanted to bless. Water came. But Moses could not enter into the promised land. Souls are getting saved in spite of these ladies who are preaching in the churches. Because these people cried out unto God and God saved them. But these ladies will be judged for going against the word of God. Women on church leadership. You know one thing I've seen? I've met many ladies in the Bible believing circles. They're the most sweetest, with a sweet spirit, more godly. When I say submissive, does not like. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Having a sp sweet spirit, a godly spirit. And many of the churches are Bible-believing churches. Why? Because they have chosen to obey God and God blesses such homes. And God blesses such churches. God blesses such families.
women on church leadership. When the wrong person is on the pulpit, there will be only wrong doctrines from the pulpit. There's wickedness in church members. You know what had happened? This church allowed the satanic church to get inside the church of Christ. And what happened was Satan took control of their church and he is up there preaching and teaching with the spirit of Zizabel in him. With the spirit of Zizabel in him. Some of the greatest cults that were started is not from men. Seven Day Adventist started by a woman, Ellen G. White. Christian Science started by a woman, Mary Baker Eddie Patterson. Pentecostal Church started by a woman. Be careful. Spirit of Zizabel. Spirit of Zizabel. One day, the husband and wife went to the doctor. The husband and wife went to the doctor and they said, uh, Doctor, I don't know, there's always fight in our home. Um, um, you know, when we say something, we each other says, and, and it really cr creates a lot of problem in our home. And the doctor said to the woman, you know, every time there is a fight, take one glass of water, drink half of the water and keep half of the water in your mouth. This is a medicine. Half of the medicine in your mouth. And every time your husband gets angry and something erupts, you just take a water in your mouth and start doing that inside your mouth. Do it five times for five minutes. And then come next we can tell me. So they went home and, and they tried to live the best they can, but suddenly on Thursday, the fight took place. Immediately the wife remembered. I'm not going to say anything. Immediately she went for the medicine. What? A glass of water. She took half of a glass of water, drank half of the water, and she just surprised the husband. He surprised the wife did not say anything this time. Suddenly, again, Friday night, the fight took place. Saturday morning, again, the fight took place, and the woman did the same thing. But here, yeah, what was happening was, the husband alone was getting angry, and the woman did not say anything. She just put the water in her mouth and started doing that. Monday morning, Sunday morning, they went, everything is fine. Monday morning, everything is fine. Tuesday morning, the husband is so happy. Took the wife to the doctor and said, Doctor, your medicine worked out very well. Our home right now is fine. Even when we are angry, my wife does not speak. What, what, what did you do? He said, I just asked your wife to shut her mouth. When she was washing her mouth with the water, there was no co words coming out of it. Keep quiet. Problem solved. He was not giving some extra adventurous medicine. He just tried to tell, keep some water in your mouth, and that's it. And that's what happened. Their problem solved. She kept quiet. And finally, the husband also started keeping quiet. And the family was going on well. Here, what had happened was they had compromised. They allowed this woman to get onto the pulpit. Or they allowed the man with that woman's spirit to get into the pulpit. The spirit of Zizabel. Controlling. Zizabel was a prophetess of the devil. And she had taken control. She led people to worship idols. Idols may not be just Images made with hands. It may be anything that comes between you and God. Anything that comes between you and God is an idol. You may say, but pastor, you don't understand. I truly don't understand. But I can just tell you one thing. 
anything that comes between you and God is an idol. What is more important for you today in this day and age? What is that that gives you the guts to say no to God? That is your idol. What is that that makes you to go beyond limitation? Not worrying about God's feeling. That's your idol. Is that your money? Is that your sports? Is that your business? Is that your job? Is that your entertainment? Your movie? What is it? That comes between you and God. That's your idol, beloveds. And that's what Zizabel comes in. That's what the spirit of Zizabel is. Women on the leadership. Wrong on church doctrine. Wickedness with the church members. Witchcraft in the church practices. Witchcraft in church. Some of the songs you go and listen to some churches... Some charismatic churches. They don't even worship God. They keep repeating, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain for 30 minutes and no rain coming. You know, there was a church. You know, in one church, they're singing. They're singing a song. Let it rain. Sing. And the pastor is, and the, the worship leader. Let it rain. And they're repeating for 30 times they repeated, let it rain. Now, nothing about God. No rain at all. But that's worship song for them. There are other songs that say, Lift up your hands and worship. Lift up your hands and worship. Whom to worship? Worship whom? Tell me somebody. To whom should I worship? They don't want to tell you. Just lift up your hands and worship. These are the hymns and songs today we have in churches. There are new churches. There. La, 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 Have you heard that song? Worship song. Spirit of Zizabel in churches. Be careful. Be careful. A church that allowed Satan behind the pulpit ruined itself, ruined the church, ruined the families, ruined marriages, ruined. Be careful. The spirit of evil. I'll tell you what every man and woman has to do. Take your Bible. Make a time for yourself. Okay, this time, I'm just going to spend time with God. Lord, I want to be that man filled with the Spirit of God. I want to be that woman filled with the Spirit of God. Now, women, that does not mean when your husband does some stupid things, you just compromise with him. Sometimes, husband has to listen to your woman because they have better advice to give you. You understand? Sometimes the women are more spiritual than men. Listen, when she gives some advices in the home. I'm not talking about getting on the pulpit and preaching. I think women spend more time on the, in prayer to God. I think so. I believe that. God reveals sometimes more sweeter things and more beautiful things from the scriptures to the women. Because they pray and, and listen, husband, listen to them. The Bible, you know what the Spirit of in the Word of God says in Ephesians chapter 5? Submitting yourself one to another. You know what that means? That does not say bo a husband boss over your wife. Submit yourself one to another. Each one submit to each other. Sometimes we just take one word. Husband submit to your wife. Uh, sorry. Wife submit to your husband. We just take that and bash over them. No, no, the Bible also says, submit one to another. Many a times, 
wives have allowed us to save much headaches in our lives because we listen to them. But there are things that you need to say to your wife. Okay, here it is. That's the end. Not more. There are some times that you need to take the leadership husband. In fact, leadership you have to take every time. Because you're the leader in the house. You ought to be the priest in the house. You're the one who's just, who, who has to call your wives. Come on, let us pray. The Bible says you're the priest. You're the, you're, the, you're the one who is supposed to call your wife and your children and start praying. You're the one who need to sit and read the Bible with your wife and children. Destroying the power of the evil in your home. You know, I'll tell you, don't, get, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to show myself to be something. It's not wrong to have television in your house, okay? It's okay to have TV in your home. But I'll tell you what, TV is a witchcraft. Why? It only depends upon the button, okay? If the button is right, then it's not witchcraft. You can allow the witchcraft in your home by the TV, by the remote. And even it's also with your computers and with the phone. It's a witchcraft. But it depends upon who is controlling whom. If you are the one who is controlling the remote, then you're fine. I mean, how are you controlling it? If you're watching things that are satanic in your home, you're inviting the evil spirit in your home. If you're watching something that is dirty on the TV, you're inviting that spirit in your home. If I would ask the mother and father, hey, how about sending your children to walk, uh, watch husband and wife having sex? Will you send somebody? No, I will not. But you are allowing the same thing in your living room. You are, allow, you are, you, you are sitting there and, and the man and the woman is making love and we watch that, isn't it? We don't allow our children to see somebody in somebody's house. But you are allowing in your living room. Think about it, okay? Just open up. What are we doing? We're inviting the witchcraft in our home. Do you remember in those days? You all may be remembering. Those days when we had black and white TV. When the husband, when man would go and hold the wife. You know what we do? You remember? We did that. We closed our eyes. I remember we didn't have a TV. My auntie had a TV. During the holidays we would go and we'd be watching movies. And I'm not against movies, as long as it's good. We were watching movies and anything would come, my auntie would say, close your eyes, and we were And then she opened your eyes. Okay, then we start watching it. Things were different then. Today, mommy, daddy, everybody see it, watching the romance. It's common today. I mean, you have to make a decision. Husband, you have to make a decision. What you allow. Wife, you have to make a decision. Mothers, you have to make a decision what you allow your children. It's, it's difficult. In this day and age, the children are so rebellious. They think they are too smart. Son, what are you watching? Why you want, mommy? You see that? I had, I, I had a girl, a neighbor. Oh, man. A neighbor. One day, she, was, she and her mother was talking and I was there. And the mother said, who called you? Why you want? And the girl is just eight years old. Eight years old. She spoke on the phone. One of her college uh, school ch a friend called her for something, whatever it is. Why you want? What do you mean? You see what children are? I'll tell you, some of you young girls, boys, you know, school children, college children, your brain has not developed the way your parents' brains have developed. They have seen life more than you, okay? Just because you are living in this computer world does not mean you are smarter than your parents. They are much more smarter than you. And if you would take their, uh, their advice, you will save your life of heartaches for future. Your parents may not know how to start a computer and switch it off. That does not mean you are smarter than your parents. You know what you are allowing is allowing the spirit of Zizabel in your home. 
filling your mind with the spirit of Zizabel in your heart. I don't know, I was supposed, I thought I will finish it faster. I'm still here today. Okay, the Lord exposes the Satan's church. Be careful. Women preachers, women pastors. God is not for it. Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you know, it, it was a church that spoke in tongue. And the woman's never spoke in tongue in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The Bible tells, let your woman keep silence. The Bible says, I do not allow a woman to speak. I, I'm not saying it. Go read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 34. The women were keep, told to keep quiet in the church. They were not asked to speak in tongues. They never spoke in tongues. But today you go anywhere in the Pentecostal churches. When they speak in tongues, majority are women. Why? Satan has entered in the church. Satan has entered in the church. Oh. The Bible says the Lord exposes Satan's church and he gives them chance to repent. Because there were people who had entered into the church that belongs to Christ. And these people, Satan had brought his company inside. And these church members, they compromised. And God gave them chance to repent. It's like, you heard the gospel, you should at least repent. They would not. Look, the Bible says in verse number 21. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. And she repented not. She. Who? Zizabel. Today there are churches that has lifted up women more than the son of God. The Roman Catholic Church exalts Mary about Jesus Christ. Be careful. The Pentecostal churches that have allowed women to be pastors. Be careful. There are churches even among the Baptists that has allowed women to be pastors. Be careful. Just because they can do better does not mean that is right. God says what is right and what is wrong. You understand? God says what is right and what is wrong. God gave them space to repent. They repented not. They continued in fornication. What she did, she taught them to seduce and to fornicate and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. But when God gives chance to repent and they don't repent, God pronounces judgment on Satan's church. God pronounced judgment on Satan. Says, verse number 22 through 24. And behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that will commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Except, you see, this is a church that was not saved. This was a church among the saved. A Satan church that was entered, and the pulpit was taken over by Satan himself. With the spirit of Zezebel. Here's the Thyatira church. There he is appreciating in verse number 19. They are saved. And now here he has given chance to this spirit of Zizabel. To repent. They repent not. They fornicate. And God says, you know what church? I'll tell you my dear friend. It's possible to be in this church sitting here and listening to the preaching. And still go to hell. Every time you come and hear the word of God. God is giving you opportunity to repent. A space to repent. Repent. And you know what? When you harden your heart and you don't and you don't listen to God's word, you know what happens? The Bible says here, Behold, I, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery. You know what bed? You know what bed? This is not spongy bed. This is a bed of a lake of fire. This is a bed of tribulations, great tribulations. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. God is saying, even among the church, even of those people with the, with the spirit of Zizabel who got into this Thyatira church, He's saying, I'm giving them chance to repent. Hopefully at least somebody gets repented and says, I thank God I got out of the church of Zizabel. He gave me a chance to repent and somebody came and preached the gospel. I got saved. I thank God. 
I was in the church of Jezebel, the church of Rome, and God saved me. Some of you here can say the same thing. Amen? Amen. In the same way, God gives chance for others to repent. But they depended not. And to these people, what happens? They go into the great tribulation. And I will kill our children with death. And all the churches shall, God is a loving God. So forgiving God. How can he do that? <laughs> You'll watch him doing it. He'll cast you in hell if you don't repent. Now that is not loving, isn't it? No, no, no. That is loving, dear friend. It's love to tell you that if you don't repent, you'll end up in hell. It's love to tell. It takes more love to tell someone to repent of his sin and get right and get out of hell. It takes love. People say, God is loving, He's forgiving. He'll not say, look at the word of God. I'll go to hell. Great tribulations. I will, cast, uh, I will kill a children with death and all the churches shall know that I am He. That such are the reins and hearts. Hey, listen, listen. God is searching the reins and hearts. The reins, the thoughts and the heart's desire with what you are doing. You can do lots of things for God without right heart. Why do you do what you do? Why do you come to church? Why do you come to church? Because you love God? Or is it just, just, just like that? Why do you pray? Is it because you love God? Why do you read your Bible? Is it because you love God? Why do you give your offering? Is it because you love God? Why, why do you sing? Is it because you love God? It ought to be because you love God. You know what the Bible says? That he which, uh, that all the churches shall know that I am he that such the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. He is watching your heart and your thoughts and your desires. You may be busy in many things, but are you busy because you love God? Or are you just doing it because you want some appreciation from people? Oh, this is something that really went deep down in my heart. Why am I doing what am I doing? Am I doing it because I love God? Am I doing it because I want people to get saved because I love God? I began to think about it. And we all have to think about it. Everything should drive us to do it because we love God, dear friend. I come and put this banner because I love God, right? We come and set these things because we love God. We come and sing because we love God. We come to church because we love God. Read a Bible. We win soul. We, we witness because we love God. And God says, I will give unto everyone according to your works. The Lord pronounced the judgment on Satan's church. Cast into tribulation and kill her children with death. The Lord reveals the plan to the church, such as the reins and hearts, rewards according to your works. And then he says in verse 24, But unto, I, unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan. Oh man, the depths of Satan is so deep. The way he works, the way he crawls into the churches today. Whew. As many as have not this doctrine, which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you no other burden. Those who do not know the doctrine of Satan, those who do not interfere with him, those who do not compromise with him, those who don't go to him, those who don't uh, do what uh, he is saying, those who don't... Um, you know, have a relationship with the works of the devil. To them he says, I will give no burden to you. You know why? Because the Lord says, only that are labor and are heavy burden, come unto me and I will give you rest. And he says, take my yoke. He says, my, my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. He's saying, I will take your burden. 
It says, cast thy care upon the Lord, for he careth for you. Wow. All you that labor and are overburdened, come unto me, and I will give you rest. To God's people, he will cast no burdens. Amen. Amen. I'll give you no burden. He gives rest. He gives peace unto the children of God. This church in Thyatira was wonderful. They were great children of God. We saw they were people of charity, people of faith, people of patience, people of works. God appreciated. But there were other people there crawl into satanic. Satan tried to do that. You know what God is? God says, I will cast her into the bed of adultery. No burden. Finally, the Lord gives charge to the church. The Lord gives charge to the church. I just, I'm moving because I took a lot of time. But finally here, verse number 25. Oh, there's is one more. The Bible says in verse number 25, but that which you have already, hold fast till I come. You know, my dear friends, you know what God is saying? Whatever you learn, whatever you're holding the truth, hold it fast till I come. He says it may be difficult. Sometimes it may not be the way you think that, oh, I wish it may look so big and, and it may be great and it may be wonderful. God says, whatever you have hold, hold it fast till I come. Hold your faith. Hold your faith. Hold the doctrine. Hold the truth. Hold it. Don't compromise. But pastor, it's so difficult, so hard. Yes, it is. It's going to be more hard. But you hold the truth. Hold the doctrine. Hold the faith. Hold until the Lord comes. Don't give up. Don't compromise. Don't try to change like the world so you can get more. You can do better. Be faithful. Be sincere. Until the end. Until the Lord comes. Verse 26 through 29. The Lord rewards the church. He says. And he that overcometh. And keepeth my words unto the end. You know Paul says what? I fought the good fight. I've run the race. Until the end. He kept the faith. That's what God is expecting you and me to do. As long as he has given you life to live on this earth, or until the rapture, keep the faith. Don't compromise. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nation. People who live for the Lord and are faithful will rule with Christ. Like last Sunday we saw, there are many who will enter into the kingdom of God, but many may not. Inherit the kingdom of God. That's going to be dangerous, I'm telling you. I mean, you will not go to hell, but you're not going to inherit. You may be with Christ, but you may not reign with Christ. You may not rule with Christ. The Bible says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as a vessel of potter. And shall they be broken to sure, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. Jesus Christ is the morning star. And I will give him the morning star. Which means they will be always with Christ. Christ is the one who is going to rule with a rod of iron. But we will be with him together. Some will come only once in a year to see Jesus Christ. Like how once in a year they go to Jerusalem. So there are three portions in heaven. Where are you going to be, dear friends? Where are you going to be? I remember many years ago, this week I was thinking, how can I give an example of that? When I was in school, I had no money to go for picnics. So I remember I was in ninth standard or 10. I had no money. And it was just 50 rupees you had to pay. To go for a picnic. And so, my name was not there in the list. No money to go for a picnic. Everybody is going. And my class teacher comes and she says, Lord, don't worry. I'm going to pay for your bus ticket. And so she gives me 50 rupees. And I take that 50 rupees. And I give my name. And I'm gone for a picnic. 
I went to a picnic. I entered into the kingdom. I went for the picnic. Everybody, everybody is there. But you know what? In that picnic time, other students went and they were buying bread and snacks and ice creams and I could not. Why? Because I had no money to enjoy. I was there for picnic, but I didn't enjoy the picnic. You can enter the kingdom of God, but you may not inherit the kingdom of God. You understand that? So be careful. Be careful. And I will give him the morning star, and he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Again, the Spirit speaks to the churches today. Don't let anyone teach you anything. Stay in the institution that Christ has ordained. Run away from the church of Zezebel. Always be in the church that preaches the truth. Sticks to the truth. Never compromise. I know, but I like that man. He's a good preacher. I know he's wrong doctrine, but he's a good person. Those are not going to help you. There are many good people. Who is this guy? Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. Good man. Good man. Going to hell, taking many to hell. <laughs> Pope. People think he's a good man. Going to hell, taking millions to hell. You want the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth shall make you free. Amen? Amen. There's a reward for the church. Power over the nations. Rule them with a rod of iron. Use the morning star. Oh, dear friends. I know lack of time. I was not able to say much. I wish I can say more. But I will tell you this. Be careful. This church in Thyatira was a wonderful church. But they compromised. May our church be fervent in the spirit. May our church be a church that really loves the Lord and does whatever work we do. We do it for the love of God. May we not compromise. Let us not allow the spirit of Zizabel in our home, in our school, in our churches. And ladies, God loves you the same way He loves us men. And God has great respect and honor for the ladies, the same way that he has for men. The ladies are no inferior to any other. But God has given roles for men and for women. Okay? So nothing to like, we are low. No, 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 you're not. You're very close to the heart of God. Because he made you close to the heart of man. Okay? But there are roles that God has given for us as a Christian. And let us be obedient. You know what, ladies, should be this? You need to pray to God. Lord, make me a woman with sweet spirit and a humble spirit that the, that the glory of God may be manifested through your words and through your attitudes. May the glory of God shine upon your face. And that's what God wants to do. And may God do that in your life. And may God bless you. And may God bless everybody, every man and every woman and every child, to be a church like Thyatira, which was on the right side, with charity, love, word, patience, faith. May such character be seen in our life, and when God sees and, and meets you tomorrow at the judgment seat of Christ, may he say, Ah, I liked your patience. I like how you were patient with your wife. <laughs> I liked how you were patient with your husband. I liked how you were patient with your neighbor. I liked how you were faithful. I liked your work. I liked your charity. May God say the same 
about you when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen? Amen. Shall we pray?